Hey everyone and welcome to our player spotlight. Today we'll be covering Cognitive Gaming's Barracuda, who is their hunter player, and we'll be highlighting his AMC gameplay. This was in the last tournament with over the last weekend here uh, in the early rounds. We'll watch one in the later rounds as well up against Snipe Gaming just to highlight how he plays the character. Now I wanted to do this uh, for two reasons. Number one, I wanted to do a hunter uh, for the next spotlight. I also wanted to show AMC because I feel like a lot of people like this character or want to like this character but have trouble figuring out how to play him correctly or figure out what his strengths and weaknesses are. And I think Barracuda recently picking him up and playing him with his own playstyle is an easy way for you to figure out how to play the character, how to build your own playstyle, and hopefully by watching him, Barracuda, you'll be able to figure out how to play the character yourself. So let's cover quickly, you know, how he plays him, how he goes about doing this as he kind of comes over here to harass. The first thing to look at is the skill build because that sets the pace for the whole laning phase and how you control the character overall. The skill order for levels 1, 2, and 3, for Barracuda anyway, is he picks up the Swarm, number 2, at level 1. Level 2, he'll pick up the Hive, which is his one ability, and then level 3, he'll get Honey. So it is 2, 1, 3 uh, for the first three levels. After that, he maxes out Honey first. In fact, Swarm is the last thing to max out uh, for him. Honey mixed with Hive, or having uh, activated at all with bees in it, will do the majority of the damage out of all of his skills, excluding his ultimate. Same kind of over here and harass. But what you want to do is you want to max out the honey first and make sure there is a hive attached to it when you place it down on the ground. And this is where your lane clear is going to come from. You'll still you'll see Barracuda actually get some kills later on just due to honey and the damage over time effect it applies. And it's a very overlooked skill for AMC and something that you should be maxing first if you want to play like Barracuda. Now, going on to the itemization. As far as the starting items goes, the next big thing for people always... How do I start in the lane phase? What do I buy first and how do I go about controlling the lane using that? There has been a lot of innovation in the Hunter starting builds in the last few weeks or so, about three to four weeks since the reduction to the cost of tier one boots as well as the change or rather nerf to the chin size. Once that got nerfed down and the change to the boots went, there's a lot of innovation that come into the starting item builds for Hunters. In fact, you'll see one on the opposite side of this team, Panix, uh, playing on her, of course, from Still Dreaming. This was in the first uh, round or two in the tournament. You'll see him pick up Death's Toll, Boots 1, Sprint, and two of each potion. In the next match, you'll watch Allied from Snipe Gaming pick up Tier 3 Sprint, um, and then Bancroft's, or I'm sorry, uh, into the Death's Toll, um, and then going directly into uh, the AC for Sustain. Barracuda goes on a different route, and in fact, he plays this way with most of his hunters. He goes Tier 2 Heartseeker, picks up one of each potion, and then as soon as he's able to, he goes on home, finishes off the Heart Secret, and gets Tier 1 Purification Beads, as you can see on the screen right now. So, that is going to be a big leap for him. He actually skips the Death's Toll, but he'll come back and get it. The next time he goes back, he buys Death's Toll after completing the Heart Secret, so he has to finish it earlier, gets it stacks up earlier, gets lots of damage out, and it's easier for him to trade blows with enemy characters. And, of course, gets the Death's Toll to stay safe in lane. Death's Toll is 800 gold, and you think to yourself, it's not worth it to buy it after uh, you know the three minute mark, but it actually is 10 health and mana every time you land a basic attack on a minion actually keeps you sustained for quite some time. And in the current meta, where you're staying in the lane for long periods of time, that is very valuable. You see, look at the damage output he's able to do uh, with uh, Swarm and Hive. And this is just with a few stacks on Heartseeker, um, three and a half minutes of the game, he's able to clear an entire wave uh, just by placing down that honey. And honestly, you didn't even really need to Swarm there. So that is the combo. That's the push potential. Max out the honey, clear the wave, and then look for the farm. After Heartseeker, again, goes right into Death's Toll. Then he'll go into Boots. Um, and the one way that he actually uh, counteracts the low mobility of AMC, um, he'll pick up Hasten Fate's House. Now, he rarely picks this item up on any of the other characters, uh, just profiling him as a player. Uh, he does occasionally pick it up on Artemis, and very rarely on Apollo. But in general, he picks this up as core for AMC just to counteract the overall damage uh, loss you'll have for not being able to be in the fight for long periods of time uh, due to your lack of mobility. So he picks it up and allows him to stay in the fight longer by just gluing to people 
with that Haitian Fates house. Now, as far as laning goes, he just kind of spreads the honey when he can, makes sure that you are attaching the swarm, um, or sorry, attaching the honey to an area from a hive. If you press three to activate the honey, you will see an area around the hive that is uh, attached to the aura. As long as you're placing inside of that, the bees will attach the honey and do the damage over time effect, and that's your push strategy. As far as team fights go, uh, just standard hunter play. Just make sure that you are, uh, you know, the way he plays, it just kind of sticks in the back. And once he decides on a target and thinks it's safe enough, he just commits. It's not like other hunters where you're uh, in and out. Uh, AOC is very high damage if you can get him there. And with the cripple that he has on his ultimate, the stinger, uh, you look at characters like on her, uh, even in this match, on her, Sun Wukong, uh, those kind of characters, even Tyr or Fenrir, uh, who rely on their leaps and movement abilities so much. If you can apply the cripple from the stinger and then just glue to them with the Hasten Fatalis, you'll see him burst down uh, players time and time again with the amount of damage he's able to do in a short burst with AMC and the rest of it is just playing standard hunter so let's go ahead and highlight a play here that shows off how much damage you can do not only with honey but also with the basic attacks and the stinger as well the stinger has high burst damage on it um, and hopefully by showing this play you can see uh, the power of AMC if played properly okay so at this point he's gone back to the base picked up the death's toll now going to boots after death's toll he usually finishes off the sprint sprint three is so powerful and he finishes it very early there's the high honey combination the whole wave should fall down there they all are dying now the damage output he's able to deal with that just clears the whole wave with one honey uh, now go to the blue buff now watch how this progression goes and how much damage he's able to do and honestly how much poke he has up against a character like on her who is uh, very highly valued by a lot of players You'll see Sun Wukong come from the backside here. And he's kind of staying between them. He doesn't want to get caught as much. He finds on her uh, caught out. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. There's the Stinger. There's the Swarf. Honey uh, coming out there. Picks up the Stinger when he can and backs off. And this is how Barracuda plays AMC. Uh, he just finds a good spot to sit. And he's never uh, half in, half out. He's, he uses the honey as a harassment. You see him doing damage there to Sun Wukong. Look how much damage it's dealing uh, when he stands in it. It just keeps reapplying. There's a stinger for a shot. Burst damage. And he took down Sun Wukong, who right now doesn't have a whole lot of defense, but definitely is a very tanky character. Look at this kill. That's just honey. On her just died to honey, specifically. Let's roll that back just a second here. Uh, actually, the whole thing. Initiation here on the on her forces him away. Looking at the minimap, he knows there's no jungler. The jungler's on the right side of the map. Once he finds an opportunity, commits all the way. Sticks in their face, burst damage hard into them. Um, and then once it's a lost cause, gets out. He is all in or all out on AMC. He never spends time because you can't really reposition yourself. If you're going to go in, you want to commit and do the damage because he's very high damage. But look at this. Full HP Sun Wukong standing in the honey. That's just honey. That's 56 damage every tick. There's the swarm, a few shots, and the stinger comes out right in the back. And you see Honor here. He's at about 250 HP. Lands the honey. Honor steps back into the honey. Desert Fury comes out. He doesn't even look at Honor, but just the honey gets the kill on him uh, there. And that's just with uh, Heart Seeker 3 and Boots 2. Uh, he's able to do that much damage with Honey and Stinger, uh, taking a 2v1 in that situation. Um, and that's basically what AMC is. And honestly, it, 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 the reason AMC doesn't be uh, isn't played as much or maybe uh, isn't liked as much is because he's very low mobility and requires a different mindset uh, for play. Um, and at this point, you'll see Barracuda, uh, like I mentioned earlier, commit all the way or not commit at all. And when he does commit, he gets right up in their face and does as much damage as he possibly can to try and counteract the fact that if he, he can't, you know, get in, get out. He's not built for it. He's not on her. He can't jump over walls. Uh, he's not Artemis. He can't uh, pop the movement speed and CC immunity plus the stun and get away. Uh, he's not Apollo with the ultimate that can fly when he's split pushing. So if he's going to commit, he goes hard and gets the damage out. And, you know... It, there's merit in that, in the way that AMC can do a lot of damage very quickly if you allow him to do that. So let's go ahead and hop over into the next game here, which is going to be up against Snipe in the last tournament. All these are tournament matches. Uh, and then while we're doing that, we'll cover how his build progression goes overall and how you can end the game with AMC and, and what the itemization choices really are uh, in, in the, the late stages of this match. Alrighty, over into this next match, Snipe versus Cognitive Gaming. You'll see Barracuda do the same exact build he did in the last match, and in most matches he goes down this road. Tier 2 Heartseeker, one of each potion, kind of stays in the lane with the blue buff and relies on it heavily, uh, starting out with Swarm first, going into Hive, and then Honey, and then maxing Honey out for the lane push. There goes the Swarm coming out there, uh, generally because the Honey won't do anything unless you combo it with Hive or the Swarm. Um, and so he goes for the swarm first, a little bit of damage to keep himself safe, harass if he can, and try to push the wave back until he's able to hit level 3 and combo the hive into the swarm, uh, into the honey, I'm sorry. So at this point, you see him Heartseeker 2. 
into one of each potion. He will head back, finish off the Heartseeker, and pick up Purification Beats if he can. Next back, he will go and get Death's Toll and try to finish off as much of the sprint as he can. Uh, usually, if he has the money, he will buy the entire sprint itself. After Death's Toll, he goes right into Boots to finish off the Warrior Tabi, and that's basically the way he goes in the progression. Once the Warrior Tabi is done, he'll look to finish Purification Beads or the Sprint if he hasn't already. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. Generally, he will end up going for uh, Hasten Fatalis either after Boots or two items, or uh, second item after Boots. Uh, see him kind of harassing. And here, here's a good way to highlight this. As I mentioned earlier, Allied starting with uh, Death's Toll into Sprint 3. And you'll see Barracuda doing the opposite. And in fact, Barracuda uh, at around two minutes, very, very shortly here, if we look at the gold numbers. Yeah, he's about 50 gold away from finishing the Heartseeker. Uh, around two minutes and 15 seconds, he uh, it averagely finishes that Heartseeker and then is able to start stacking up. Whereas Allied right now does have the Sprint 3, keeps him safe, but at the same time, he's relying on Death's Toll and will be very delayed on that Heartseeker um, for, uh, I think he gets it around eight or nine, uh, probably like seven, eight, min uh, seven, eight minutes is when he's able to finish a Heartseeker. Whereas you see Barracuda going home already. Um, Heartseeker is complete, uh, has no money to buy purification beads but wants to finish it up as soon as he possibly can to make sure he is actually good to go on that one so we're going to see him go for uh the the heart seeker finish it off death's toll after that and then goes directly um into boots to finish it off for the penetration that's really uh where uh the difference comes you see a lot of people go into death's toll heart seeker aussie that seems to be the most common build nowadays. Uh, one thing that uh, Barracuda does on AMC, and, and if we're going to profile it properly, uh, he will go directly into Malice after the boots more often than not, and then into the Haste and Fatalis. He's been working in a lot of Bloodforge, as you can see with his build with Heartseeker, Death's Toll, Boots, Malice, Haste and Fatalis, uh, severely lacks lifesteal, and so he goes into uh, the Bloodforge more recently. He's been experimenting a lot with that. And then goes into Death, uh, Deathbringer or uh, Chin Size if he needs it. So if we're going to profile an average build uh, for Barracuda's AMC, we're going to go Heartseeker, Death's Toll, Boots, Malice, Hasten Fatalis, Bloodforge, Sell a Death's Toll for a Deathbringer. Occasionally working in Asi instead of Bloodforge, Chin Size for extra damage. Void Blade if you're being pressured a lot by physical. There's a lot of things that go into itemization, but you know that's a, a, a topic for another video. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you're looking for uh, ways that Barracuda plays his hunter, Sweet. AMC, or other hunters in tournament play, head on over to smitepros.com. This is actually the best place to uh, track how p players play in general tournament. It tracks every single player that has ever competed in a uh, st stat tracking website or uh, tournament, one of the seeding tournaments. You see the honey getting a kill here. Um, on uh, on, Sh on uh, Shing in the jungle. There goes a stinger kill as well. Damage output is uh, very high with AMC if you get enough uh, in the beginning and are able to use his skills properly. So head over to smitepros.com. You'll check out his team profile. I'll put that in the description below uh, as well as his personal profile to see uh, what characters he plays in tournament, how well he does with those characters, and what builds he has with those characters. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth on how he plays overall, head over to his tier monster profile, which I will have down below. And this will show you how he plays every character in the game. If you scroll down to the bottom of the tier monster profile, you will see a uh, grid of the god profile icons. Click on one of these and it'll show you how well he does with the character, his last five builds of the character, and his stats with that character as well. So there's a lot of information for you available. Um, make sure you, if you're looking for tournament only, go to Smite Pros. If you're looking for just general stats, tier monster is where you want to go. So make sure you are checking that out. And hopefully this one was a little bit shorter for you and you enjoyed the format a little bit more. So let me know how I can improve these uh, as we go on in the series and who you'd like me to do next and what god you'd like me to do next. Uh, if you see someone in tournament play that you really enjoy, they're doing something different. Frosty Act did Arachne two weeks ago. Uh, we know that uh, you know Bastet mid was used by Shadow Nightmare as well. Uh, we know that there has been a lot of Geb play, um, Jungle and Mirror, all this kind of stuff. So let me know what you would like to see next and we'll see if we can work that in. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Don't forget to like the video, share it out, favorite it, comment it down below with what your favorite part was or how it can improve and I'll see you in my next video.